I'm Janet Forrest. In season four of the Nantucket Athenaeum podcast, we take a closer look at two families that had immeasurable influence on how we understand the world around us. But to tell their story, we have to go way back to a time when the question, what time is it, had a whole different meaning. They had clocks, but there was no way to determine how to set them. For that matter, there weren't even time zones, nor was there any need for time zones because things just moved so slowly. And so the way they were telling time was pretty much the way they would have been doing it thousands of years earlier, which is via essentially a sundial. But in the mid 1800s, the inability to tell time correctly was becoming an existential crisis. For navigation. Even at this time with the best instruments they had available, Measuring longitude was not precise. It could be off by a mile or more. For national security. During that same time period, we didn't have very good charts of even our own harbors. Whereas everybody knew that the British and the French, and to some extent the Spanish, had maps and charts that were actually better than ours. And for our growing railroad system. And in the early 1840s, there had been some absolutely horrific head-on collisions, and the public had just had enough. Our young democracy needed solutions but there were mixed feelings on how to find them. There were a lot of people that felt that if we established a, a government observatory, they would start telling people where their land begins and ends. And they didn't think that was something that the government should be involved in. There was no formalized pipeline to train people for this type of work. Science, astronomy was not professionalized yet. People going to college, it was vastly different than what people are going to college for today. The moment was ripe for innovation. And it would be a stealthily run government agency called the Coast Survey and its complicated but brilliant superintendent, Alexander Dallas Bash, that would create a network of scientists and lead America into the modern age. Bash and the Coast Survey would also bring together two men who would be at the epicenter of that change. Coincidentally, both named William. William Cranch Bond. He was a clockmaker. He was born in the 1790s, and he turned out to be what we would probably call these days a mathematical and a mechanical genius. William Mitchell, he kind of was a jack of all trades, master of all. I mean, he had 12 mouths to feed. They had 10 children. He was an academic. He was, we say amateur, but he really, he was an astronomer. You name the scientific journal of the 19th century, there were articles by William in them. Each was raising children with talents and drive that would equal or surpass their own. The company was called William Bond and Son. Joseph, he was both an astronomer and an instrument maker. George Phillips would be William's successor at the Harvard Observatory. And also Richard Fifield was perhaps the most mechanically inclined and probably the closest to his father in terms of being a mechanical genius. He would always say, though, probably his first love was teaching which is then what he did with his children and with Mariah. You know, Mariah rated her first chronometer for a ship's captain when she was 14. Henry would go on to work for the Coast Survey. He would teach at MIT. He would also be one of the founders of the National Geographic Society. The relationship between the Bonds and the Mitchells and their shared love of science and education would last generations. But both families would need to confront the expectations and the standards of their time. Alexander Bosch, he said to William, I, I want to hire Mariah. And William said, absolutely no, because if you do, you'll lose your job. And then they said, of course, everyone marveled at the simplicity of his clothing. People thought the Mitchells were crazy when they would observe eclipses. The idea of funding what we might call science was sort of controversial. It's like, what does this have to do with what we really need to get done? Despite the critics, the work of the Bonds and the Mitchells would thrust them into the spotlight. Mariah was known throughout the world. I mean, her comet discovery obviously launched her onto a worldwide stage, but people were coming to the Athenaeum, you know, coming to Nantucket and wanting to meet the lady astronomer. But fame would also have its costs. The head of the Coast Survey, Beish, was Ripping. He was livid. I control all publicity. Everything goes through me. I'm making sure that everything I do serves a political purpose, and you guys are grabbing the headlines. And in this era, long before women's suffrage and the modern feminist movement, it would be two women who would be the stewards of their family's legacies. One through academia. You know, when they offered her that position at Vassar, she didn't accept it right away. One, she didn't right. really understand that they were offering it to her. And it was William who actually said to her, Mariah, they're actually offering you to ask you to come and teach. And she's like, oh, I can't do that. I don't have a college degree. But then she did. And she became this, this legacy that laid out after her for so many generations. And one through tragedy. 
Richard would change his will. And in that, he directs that Sarah would inherit his share of the business and be designated the sole executrix. So he could have picked any one of the people that surrounded them, but he decided, no, Sarah is the one who's going to get the business. It was a brief time when the door of opportunity was thrown open to women in science. In this limited series, Jim Borzileri, Reference Library Associate at the Nantucket Athenaeum, and Jason Finger, Deputy Director of the Mariah Mitchell Association, peel back the layers of these two extraordinary families and the impact and influence they had then and now. Join us for The Bonds, The Mitchells, and The Dawn of Time. It's not the romantic story that sometimes gets told, but I think it's a lot more interesting.